uh, yesterday and headed inland finally said goodbye to the coast and we're going to explore over the course of the next days uh, Millstream National Park and Karajini National Park so we found a beautiful spot uh, like overlooking the valley last night to sleep really peaceful beautiful sunset and then we just went to Python Pool this morning had breakfast checked that out which was super super stunning and beautiful and now we are on a hunt for a four-wheel drive track I've heard it goes to lots of little uh, water holes and pools so hopefully we can find it and check it out We've just arrived at the end of the trail. It was not too long, around like 13k. Beautiful drive, probably one of the most scenic four drive track that we've done. But that was fairly easy. It was rated like kind of like hard uh, online, but yeah, we didn't find any obstacles at all. Uh, they're definitely feasible, even if you don't engage four drive physically. Unfortunately, there's no water at the end of the trail. Dry as a bone. Yeah, we're really hoping to camp by like the river, <laughs> but it's dry season and it's winter. So we're gonna go on a little walk, try to find a little water hole. It's quite hot already, so we'll see what we find. How amazing is that? No luck for water though, it is completely bone dry. So I must have to come back here in the height of summer and strike the rains so we're going to get back in the general and continue a little bit further see where that takes us and then we'll probably ticky tour on back out of this forward drive track and continue the uh, exploration So we ended up driving a bit further on the hunt for a water hole, which we found. But as you can see, the color of the water is just not really appealing. So it's not really like a water spot, like a water hole for swimming. So probably just have lunch here, um, rest for a bit and then continue to do the drive back and then just try to find another campsite for the night. Someone on the branch. Same style, but not the same branch. 
So we get quite a lot of questions these days about how we go about finding all these cool spots, these special spots that we are always uh, showcasing in the videos. And uh, I mean, that's one of the main reasons we made the, uh, the e-box that we bring out every month. Uh, is to really like showcase those spots that you guys can come and find them as well using the GPS coordinates because I think that's that's a huge amount of the enjoyment that we get out of this place isn't actually the destination it's that journey to first of all find a spot and second of all the reward of you know maybe even finding a spot that hardly anyone else even goes to sort yeah. of thing um, so normally we go about by we'll check like Google satellite and if it looks like there's some features like a ravine or a river uh, we'll see if there's some sort of way we can find a track to get there because often there will be uh, Or we'll use something like HEMA navigation system Sometimes they'll have like a bush camp listed with a, a Like an unmarked track to get there and that will often be like a four-wheel drive track that will end up being really amazing Or we'll hear from someone or we'll see something online and rumors of a cool four-wheel drive track in the area sort of thing Yeah, so for example for this one that we just left not really the way that we usually find something but we ended up going to the visitor center in Karatha and just getting like the typical touristy brochure and just like having a look for it because we knew we would be out of reception and I spotted on one of the maps a little something remote camping and it looked like there was as well a four drive track leading to it so then what we did is like just did a little bit of research online because obviously there was not much information in that mm -hmm. brochure I believe uh, the touristy center doesn't really want to share too much information and promote going to these places so it's kind of like you need to go um you need, your way. yeah exactly yeah. to do some research so we ended up finding a little bit more about it but there was not too much information to be honest so what we did is we just drove here uh at, did the intersection at the look it didn't look dodgy so we went otherwise we can just turn back if it just doesn't look like something suitable for us but we're glad we did because that was definitely a really nice uh, little four drive track and really beautiful view so yeah can't wait to check out more of this area mm, and um, just to add to that we've noticed a lot of full-time overlanders will not risk their vehicle which is completely understandable they won't risk their vehicle unless the journey is to get somewhere else and it's sort of you know the easiest path to get through or whatnot whereas as for us i mean we're we're driving around a highly impractical vehicle for highway use right i mean 37 inch tires petrol um overweight and the reason for that is because we love doing this so we love actually going off the beaten track risking uh, I mean, there's, it's not a huge risk, but a slight risk for breakages like we had, for instance. But I mean, that's why we do this. It's why we enjoy it. We don't want to stick to the main tourist hotspots. We want to find our own spots and then share them with you guys to show how incredible this country is and how you can sort of find these places well, just with a little bit of exploration, a little bit of um, common sense and, and a weapon of a vehicle sort of thing. If you're new here, pause this video right now, click that subscribe button. Because we're doing some pretty cool stuff like this every single week, uploading them for free on YouTube for you to enjoy. We're currently driving down a private mining access road. So it's one of the roads owned by Rio Tinto. We had to get a permit to access this track and then do like a bit of a test, which took about 20 minutes of watching a video. This means that you could encounter heavy equipment and personnel around any bend or over any hill. You must always slow down. And, and then fulfilling our multiple choice exam just basic stuff on like road safety and what to do with road trains and things like that. I don't know how long it is, it's probably 150k plus. We're on our way to Karajini basically down this road so it cuts right through the Pilbara uh, and it's the fastest uh, way to get there for us so getting that permit was really really good and um, so far the road conditions have been great. As you saw the trains are 
massive. Yeah, pretty neat. All right, so we finished the Rio Tinto access road. Look at this absolute beast behind me. Maybe the new overlanding rig, but I'd say that's a bit over GVM. So we're in now the town of Tom Price. We just got some groceries, fueled the car back up and got some more water. And now we're gonna head about an hour to Hammersley Gorge, which I've wanted to go to my entire life. So super excited. So after a very long day of driving, so lots of like exploring and four drive this morning and then this uh, Rio Tinto Railroad this afternoon, we finally found our campsite for the night, which will be on our Wildside ebook because it's a sick spot. So to get here, we found like a mountain and basically it's like four drive only and you get to the top, which is like a thousand meters elevation, like very quickly that elevation, that was steep, like probably one of the steepest truck we've done. So definitely recommend four drive to come here. But that was really cool. Like the view was amazing from the top, but a little bit too windy. That's why we just came down a little bit and we found this little nook. So this is where we'll spend the night. Set up the rooftop tent. Look how dirty the general is. So much dust, so much mud. So every time we come close to the car, we're just getting dirty ourselves. So we'll probably need like a proper shower tomorrow so that we can carry on our adventures for the coming days. We've made it to Karajini National Park. We are currently in Hammersley Gorge and we spent the night in the car park last night. Got up at the crack of dawn this morning because I really want to get a photo of this little magical waterfall here. So we're now just waiting for the sun to rise. Should hopefully be in the next 30 minutes. <laughs> Now we came here yesterday afternoon and it was absolutely packed with people. Lots of kids jumping in the water and stuff and it would have been impossible to get a photograph. And then it actually became pretty cloudy anyway. So that's when we decided to spend the night here so that I could try and get this photo off the, with the early light. 
hopefully get a really nice photo. So in total, we spent three days exploring Karajini National Park, every walk and look at, and absolutely loved it. It was really busy though, and there was not much while camping, so we decided not to vlog here and instead focus on photography and really enjoying the surrounding and this beautiful scenery. But we really liked the Hanko Gorge, so we decided to film a small segment of it. Here's what it looks like. Overall, we are absolutely blown away by Karajini. You yeah. just cannot do this place justice on camera. You really have to come here for yourself just to experience it. It's especially amazing if you can get some of these canyons all to yourself. If you go first thing in the morning or sort of the last person in the afternoon, really is just some of the best short walks we've ever done. By far, our favorite spot in Karajini National Park is one called Knox Gorge. We're actually standing above it right now. Now it's the hardest scramble to get down into, but in our opinion, the most rewarding. Doesn't seem to be as well known. There's actually a very small car park above it. And I think that's added to its charm <laughs> for us as well. Now I really wanted to try and capture some of its vibe on camera. So I did film a little short segment on it, which I'll roll now. Thanks for watching guys. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>